Hey, how you doing? It's Tom and Tom Radio Room Show. Oh, wow. I just attempted to do a hangout on the air. I'm down in my workshop. I'm using my old Dell Pentium or quad core, excuse me, quad core computer. And I was also trying to monitor it at the same time on another computer. And they're both using Wi Fi, uh, which my router is upstairs, but they both have strong signals. And it was pretty terrible. The audio was dropping out. The video was freezing. <laughs> it ain't going to work. So I have another computer, which was given to me, um, which is a faster processor. It's a 3... West Virginia. I uh, I just just did a. Whoops! I didn't mean to turn it off. I just did a did a show on this Retivas DMR digital mobile radio, and I was struggling with hitting the local repeater. I have two repeaters that I can hit. One is closer to me, but it doesn't have many talk groups on it. The other one is about at least 15 miles line of sight and I struggled to hit that repeater um, in my workshop with using the built-in antenna I can't hit the repeater if I go out on my patio and I hold the radio up in the air while sitting down I can hit the repeater so what I resorted to in my previous video is I'm using an external out side antenna it's actually a marine band antenna and it's about the base of it is about 15 feet in the air and it does a pretty good job of hitting that repeater on 440 it's on 440 the radio i mean the antenna is tuned for like 146 and 156 or something like that the marine band so it does a pretty good job I tried a couple other outside antennas that I had. This one did the best. It happens to be the highest that I can get to as far as cable. But I'm really struggling because the cable is barely making it into the radio. So what I was having problems with in that setup that I did on the previous video is I couldn't get very close to the microphone. So the gentleman said at first, he said, he couldn't hear me. My audio was very low. Signal was strong, but the audio was low. So I tried to get a little closer, but that, I was struggling to do that. What I really need, and I'm hoping Retivas will send me one, is one of their special speaker mics that connects to the special connector they have on the side. The normal speaker mics that you get for other radios, Kenwood, Yezu, um, they connect up different. So none of my other speaker mics will work. So I'm kind of on a hold for that. Uh, as far as making communications, I can still listen, but I can't talk back to those people. And that's what I want to do. I'd like to talk to these people that, you know, you can talk to people around the world. Early this morning, I was hearing some two people talking, and one was from Australia. I was hoping I could contact him, but by the time they got through talking and I got set up, he was gone. So anyway, that's where that is. That's kind of on hold right now until we do something about that audio problem. The next thing I'll be, next thing I'll be really reviewing. Actually, the next thing I'll do is go to some speech lessons. Is this MFJ 1948, and this is the HP high-powered version, in-fed amateur radio antenna. This is for 40 meters to 10 meters. I can operate on 10 meters voice with my license. It's six, the long wire is 66 feet long. I can, I can do that. I've got a pole that I'm using now on it. It's an antenna on it. And I can take that antenna and put this one up. This will, I think, you can transmit up to 600 or 800 watts into this thing. 
Well, my ICOM 706 only put out 100 watts, so no problem there. Let me just take it out of the bag here for a second. Show you what it looks like. And see if I can zoom in. All right. So this is the matching transformer so that the high impedance of the long wires, this is just straight wire, can be matched to the impedance of the radio, which wants to be 50 ohms. This is what's in this heavy, heavy box. And the reason it's so massive is because this thing will handle up to either 600 or 800 watts. Lots of watts. Matter of fact, in the documentation, they say, you know, after you've been on for several minutes, uh, let this cool down because it could get quite hot. Well, now, today, that wouldn't be a problem because it's only 52 degrees outside. So that probably wouldn't be too big of a problem. And I usually don't, don't transmit um, for more. I don't have a conversation for more than 15 minutes anyway. So that's this has got to be mounted, hung, and then bring in the coax cable here, and then this has to be strung up 66 feet. You need 66 feet to get this fully stretched out, which I have. So that'll be coming up. Um, I'll try to get this installed today and then get it set up with my radio and do a show probably next week on this antenna that was sent to me from Richard at MFJ. So that's what's coming up. Um, as I mentioned, I'm kind of on hold except for listening for the Retivas until I can get a speaker mic that will attach to this connector. What else? Oh, the other thing is, the other day, I was using, this is a software-defined radio, little dongle. I've got it on a USB extension cable. And I was, I had it on for at least a half hour. Because I was, I played with it for a while, and then I went in the house to get something to drink, and then a couple other things, and I came back to it, and I wanted to change the antenna, and so I picked up this thing. This thing was quite hot. I could hold it, but I didn't want to hold it very long. So this thing gets, and I'm not transmitting; I'm just receiving. So the thing gets quite hot. So if this was connected pull it out. If this was connected, say, to a laptop, it would be getting some pretty good heat into the laptop. Now, luckily, I had it on this extension, and it was laying on the bench like this, and it was, I think it was 65 degrees in here, so it did have kind of a heat sink, um, but I can imagine you are operating this and the room temperature was say 78 degrees and this was plugged in directly into your laptop or even your computer your desktop this thing might overheat to where it would get damaged so I did some research on the internet and apparently that is a problem now this is the if I unplug it so you can see it again this little guy right here the any SDR smart by noahelectcom.com and they make a whole bunch of different configurations of this and I have two or three and they work pretty good yeah I I like them I really do I like them they're in it very inexpensive I think they're typically $25 or less uh, and this is this appears to be I think this is metal and it does come apart. I'm not going to take it apart because I'll never be able to get it back together. But I just want to warn you about this thing can get really warm. And like I say, it's not transmitting. It's just receiving. But there's so much electronics packed on that little circuit board inside. It gets quite hot. I don't know how much current it's drawing off the USB port, but apparently quite a bit. Maybe an amp. So that's that. I think that's about it. Um, 
Uh, let me see. If, I'm trying to think if I got any radios coming in for review. Uh, I don't think so. I'm really struggling to get radios in for review. I'm not done very good on getting uh, older radios off of eBay. A lot of a lot of ads on eBay. I mean, there's tons of radios on eBay, but a lot of the ads say, "Oh, I couldn't test it, so it's as is." Well, if you can't just stick a piece of wire on the back of it to test it, I I'm leery of it. So I've been staying away from those. Also, people have been asking a lot for shipping. I mean, even on small Portable radios asking $35 and up for shipping, and they're like in one state away from me. I don't know how little leery of people ever asking for a lot of money for shipping, way beyond what it would you'd think it would cost, even if they paid somebody to pack it and ship it. $35 for a probably five pound radio. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. So I'm really struggling finding used radios, older radios. And I've kind of gone the gamut of new radios. There's just not that many new shortwave radios on the market. Um, so if you have any suggestions about radios that I can review, I can get review, um, some deals on e eBay or something on Amazon, please let me know. Even if you have a radio that you might want to sell me so that I can review it on my show, just drop me a line. You can either leave me a comment here or you can send me an email to trrs73 at gmail.com. The other thing that I've been looking for is new applications for Android devices related to amateur radio and shortwave listing. If you know of any of those that I haven't reviewed, please let me know. Ah. If you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. That tells me I'm doing shows that you like. Have a great day. Bye-bye.